Okay. And you created the horses, moles and donkeys, yeah? For you to ride and as a dormant. And he creates that which you do not know. Yeah? Okay. So this verse here says to the believers, one of amongst many verses, that there are created things. Allah speaks about first created things that we know, like the horses and the moles and donkeys. Then he says that there are created things as well that you don't, don't know about. Right? Then Allah speaks about humans. They say Allah created the human, He honored him over many of His creation. Which would mean that there is more honored creation than the human beings as well. So the, the human being is not the most honored creation. There is other creation that is even more honored than us that we might not know about, right? The Quran talks about, you know, we believe there is earth. We believe there is seven layers of what you would call above you, heaven or sky or whatever it is, right? Okay. Not the actual heaven that you go to, paradise, okay. but above you there are seven layers of sky, right? We say what we see right now around us is the first layer. Right. Which we call that Sama al Dunya, the first layer, right? So Allah says in these layers, He placed creation. Other than us as well, we're not the only creation in this yeah, layer, yeah, right? Yeah, which would mean the possibility of the existence of, of dinosaurs. We have nothing against it. So if a Muslim believes in it, it does not affect his creed. If he does not want to believe in it as well, it does not affect his creed. So I was not disagreeing with you telling you that dinosaurs don't exist. Okay. But I was telling you, I don't find it an issue that the Bible, for example, does not talk about it. Okay. Because the absence of evidence does not mean evidence of absence. Okay. Yeah. So just because the Bible does not mention it, does not really mean the Bible is right or wrong. Do you get the okay. point? Yeah, yeah. Why? I'll give you an example. Allah does not mention dinosaurs, for example, if they were to exist actually, right? Because they're irrelevant to us as human beings. Well, how would it change my life whether there was dinosaurs or there wasn't dinosaurs? This is an event that took place in history. So we don't consider it to be beneficial knowledge. The Quran is sent as guidance for mankind. It's the literal word of God. So it's not inspired by God like Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. It's not the words of Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. But we believe it's the literal verbatim words of the Creator. The Creator actually spoke these words, right? So the Quran is mainly a guidance for human beings. Okay. How to, they, to live your day-to-day -day life. I have a new question for you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Something completely different. No problem. So, I don't want to come off as rude, but I am... You don't I don't have know to. if ignorant is the word, but yes. I don't know. So I would prefer to ask and find out than be ignorant. That's just how, that's what you should do. So, and by the way, don't get offended. I don't get offended, yeah, so no. don't worry about so, it. So, people that like hate Muslims often say there's something to do with Sharia law. Okay. So, I know that most Muslims, because I have some Muslim friends, don't believe in Sharia law. That's some, nice. some of them or something have said to me it's like a corruption or a perversion. <laughs> the can rug. You, can you can explain okay. to me? So they are laymen, I'm assuming. They're just lay Muslims, yeah? I don't know what lay Muslims... As in like, oh, they didn't study Islam they're not, like... No, they're, they're not a scholar. Yes. They're not a scholar. No, not just a scholar, but they didn't even study Islam on an academic level in any way, uh, shape no, or form. Yeah. Okay, so it, what they're saying is completely wrong. Okay. Sharia is Islam. Why? Okay. The word Sharia in the Arabic means pathway to something. Okay. Right? Can be used for pathway to the water, for example. Okay. In an Islamic sense, we use it as a pathway to God. Okay. So anything I do to get to my creator okay. is Sharia. So me speaking okay. to you right now is Sharia. Me praying okay. five times a day, Sharia. Me giving my charity is Sharia. So, but what happens in the, in the news, in the media, is that they focus on something which is less than 5% of Sharia, which is the punitive laws. Punitive laws. Punitive laws, right? And that's what we call Hudud. Hudud is not Hudud are the punitive laws in Islam. Hudud is, are the laws that are applied in the society the, the, regarding the crimes that you do. You know, if you do a certain crime, this is the law that takes place. And every Muslim has to believe in that anyways, because it's a part of the Quran. Like the Quran talks about certain laws. If someone steals, right. if someone rapes, if someone kills, what is the laws, what should we do to that individual? What should be the societal law, you know? So where is the perversion in uh, like Afghanistan, for example, where women aren't allowed to be educated. So, okay. Because here, women are educated, like yes. in the UK. So why not there? Is that is that is that a religion thing, or or am I completely wrong and it's a societal thing? Uh, you would know if you look at other Muslim countries in the world, like in Egypt. In Egypt, women are educated. In Morocco, women are educated. All over the Muslim countries, there's no Muslim country that stops women from being educated. Except now, what is going on in in. Uh, what you called in Afghanistan. Yeah. I don't know how true it is, to be honest. I've not been there. Okay. But the claims that there was no education of women, well, there's restrictions, I would say, on the education of women in certain 
aspect, right? This is something unique to, to, to uh, Afghanistan. And if it was a Muslim commandment, it would be present in other Muslim countries. Especially when you have two billion Muslims in the world, you know? So you would have other countries applying this law as well. So the Quran commands you to seek knowledge. It says, say, and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Prophet, he said it's an obligation on every Muslim to learn, to seek knowledge, right? So when you look at Islam, when it was at its most power in Spain, right? You would see the, uh, the, the technology you have today, majority of it is based on what they discovered at that time. Like for example, uh, the scientific method that you have today, the new scientific method is developed by a Muslim, Ibn al-Haytham. Okay. Studying the physical world through experimentation, repeatability and falsification. Ma algebra is from Muslims. Okay. Uh, you have uh, algorithms. It's from a scientist called Al-Khawarizmi. A mathematician. Al-Khawarizmi. Algorithm is literally a translation of his name. So the algorithms that we're using today is developed from him, right? Uh, uh, using cameras is also based on optics. The book of Hassan ibn al-Haytham, right? I can go on and on and on, right? Razi was a, was a physician. His statue is in France now. Today, people don't even know who that man was, right? So Muslims, if you look at what they contributed to the world, which is a lot of people in the West have no clue about because it's not being taught in universities. So people don't know what Muslims actually contributed to, to the world. We have no issues with learning, with knowledge, with science, with any of these things. We understand this limitation and we understand that it's a tool. It's an instrument that you use to, re to achieve something. Yes. Right? And it's not, it doesn't give you certainty. It gives you the best conclusion that you have with the data around you. That's what science is. So we understand what science is, when we use it, we believe it's a useful method, right? So uh, if someone tells people not to learn, that would be opposing, as I said to you, all of these things that I just mentioned about Islam. It's just a media narrative, right? But what about the existence of the Creator? Do you believe in a Creator? It's the important thing, I think. Uh, so the reason why I walked up to you is because you guys, or uh, one, one, one of this set, did one in Stratford. And I went up and I had yeah, a very today, long, long today. conversation in Stratford. Was he a long beard, a guy? Uh, was, I think he did have a beard, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, he did. He, did definitely, he definitely had a beard, I know he was yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you yeah. spoke with the Irish one. Because, uh, no, no, because he had a... I don't know what, I don't know what the headdress is. Yes, it's yes, like yes. a white woven one. Yes, yes, yes. I know him, I know him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, um, maybe. Yes. I don't know. But I had a very long conversation with him. It's, it's under, under the same charity as us. Oh, okay. Yes. Because we were talking about it for, for, for quite a while, because I, I still stand on the fact of like ag being agnostic, because he was saying to me, we have something, so you have to believe that something was made. And I, I still kind of believe in chance. That what did he say? What did he say exactly? It was quite a while ago, but he basically said to me, or well, the crux of the conversation was, um, Earth was made so, with so much love, so pure, that it is so good. The fact that it is in the right place to have life, to have heat, to have water. Tele to have, teleological that, argument. Yeah. Teleology, all basically. Of this, then, then, therefore, there must be someone that saw this and goes, we put it here, we do this this way, therefore we have this object, which is Earth. Okay. That's how he said that to me. And I said, sure, like, I can see that argument, totally. But I think... There are 20 billion planets. Earth happened to be at the right place at the right time. Boom, life. That's that's where I stand right now. Might change in tomorrow, next year, who knows? But but the fine tuning is not limited to Earth. No, it's not. Fine tuning includes the beginning of the universe, yeah. the speed the universe was expanding at, the molecules joining together, mm -hmm. how many molecules are there, the heat, the gravitational yeah. constant, everything about the universe is fine tuned in a way which allows life. So it's not just that the Earth in a specific position and there's other planets that happen to be there, yep. but literally from the starting point, from the first moment of the expansion, it is so complex. If it were to happen, you know, if you just have one number, there's a book called Six Numbers. Okay. It shows you that if, just, if there is one small number in infinite amount of numbers was to be changed, there wouldn't be the universe to begin with. There wouldn't be anything. So it's not just, fine tuning is not just limited to Earth. So he was maybe talking about on a more of a, a, a minor, or what you yeah. call it, a minor scale, oh, and a major scale. He said to me, he said to me yeah. I have this phone. Yes. And it must have come from something. Because all the parts exist, but they don't all just come together, all okay. into one place. Sure, sure. I remember him saying that. I, and I you agree with or you disagree with that? This is where we, we almost got into an argument about it, because I was kind of <laughs> like, I understand where you're going from, but I still believe in chance. So he was going, oh, so you believe if I just left 
this space here empty for 20 billion years. Yes. The possibility that one day this phone might materialize it. And I was like, uh -huh. by my logic, yes, but now you've made me stupid. I've got one last question because I've got to go soon. Yeah. Um, but allow me to ask you one thing as well. No, go, 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 you, no, no, ask you a like, question uh, first. My last, my last question is, yes. why are Muslim women not allowed to have their hair shut? And why are some relations allowed to see it? Like husbands are allowed to see their, their, their wife's hair, but I believe brothers aren't. No, they are. They are. Yeah, all close related family members are allowed to. Look, any I'll give you I'll put it this way. Anyone who's not allowed to marry that woman, with just few one or two exceptions, anyone who's not allowed to marry the woman, it's called the mihrim. Okay. That mihrim is allowed it can see the woman with the, with her hair shot. Okay. Okay. That includes the uncles, the the, okay. the mothers, the daughters, the, the sisters, the brothers. What's the story behind having the hair covered then? Is it a respect thing? Or? There is no story. There is. I mean, what is the reason then? Sorry. Yes, it's fine. No, no, don't worry. But as I said, don't worry about offending me. I don't get offended here. <laughs> don't worry about it. So, in order for me to explain, I have to ask you something ask about me. the topic. Of course. Where do you get your morality from? Where do I get my morality from? My sense of morality is something. I could either say it was taught to me by society or by my parents, but I okay. would prefer to say that it's something I, I developed on my own. It's my sense of morality. Is but you would agree that's not really the case. Because you were born here, you lived here, your parents taught you. So in the end, what you think will be a product of your surroundings, whether you like it or not. Even if you want to tell yourself that it was me, but it was you picking from the things around you still. Do you get the that's, point that's, I'm trying to say? You are, you are still picking from the Western narrative of morality. Of course, of course. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's a subjective thing, would you agree? If you were to be in a different yeah, country, okay. you would completely be, would be very different. believe opposite to what you believe right now. I, I could do, yeah. Yes, most okay. likely. On a, on a probabilistic basis, you would. Like if you were born in China, you would eat a dog, no problem, there's no issues. It's not, it's probably. Not, yes. Probably. So, if you get your morality from a subjective uh, perspective, what your parents taught you or what you chose would be different than what he chose or I chose. Yes. Okay. Which would mean that there is no morality. Ooh, interesting. It would mean just as it's a, a construct of the mind. What you think is, because the same action can in the same time be right and wrong. If I think it's right, it's right for me. If you think it's wrong, it's wrong for you. But it's the same action. Is the action right or wrong? It's on subjective morality, on subjective morality, it's not really right or wrong because there is no right or wrong. It's just what you convince yourself. Well, oh, that's nice. so, I like that. So, <laughs> so the only reason you believe that maybe, uh, and, the, uh, and the, you probably disagree with that, but that's on your perspective that what would be. The only reason you believe killing is wrong, raping is wrong, is because you, your subjective product of your society, told you that. That's, that's the result of the subjective. Okay. Do you get the point? I, I do. Yes. I do. And then morality will then also be enforceable. You cannot enforce it. Meaning if you go to someone and say, this is wrong, he'll say that's wrong to you, but it's not wrong to me. So don't tell me this is wrong. So if Hitler was chopping heads here, and you said to him this is wrong, he would say to you, to me is right, you have no right to enforce your subjective morality on another subjective individual. Yes, I follow you. Okay. okay. So, then we say as Muslims, we do not follow that, because that doesn't make any sense, and that would only cause chaos in the world. Which would mean allow anyone to do whatever they want to do. Because there is no right and wrong in reality. Yeah. But we do believe humans innately believe there is right and wrong. Innately believe that there is morality. Right? Innately they know deep down inside of them that this, there is a right and there is a wrong. Yes. To an extent. Yes. Which we call the fitrah. Fitrah is an innate disposition given by the creator to the creation to recognize certain aspects of life to be right or wrong. Okay. Okay? Make sense? So we call it the fitrah. Now, Muslims don't, don't believe in subjective morality. Okay. They believe in objective morality. Objective is that which is outside of you, your ideas, your desires, and your emotions. Okay. It's objective, right? Yeah. I we believe it comes from the Creator. If I made a phone, or if I made, if I made these headphones, I would know about it more than anyone else because I'm the manufacturer, the maker. Yeah. Yeah. If I tell you don't do this with it or do this with it, you would follow what I tell you to do because yeah. you know that I know more about it and I know what is beneficial and harmful for it. Yeah. If we are created by a Creator and it follows logically that that creator knows about us the most so he can tell us our objective right and wrongs to do and not to do okay. so based on that Muslims follow objective morality which comes from God and they do not just follow the product of the, their societal morality or where they come from 
And based on that, women wear the hijab because then it's an objective moral code that comes from God, who's all knowing, all wise, who knows about you more than you know about yourself. So, somewhere. And that in, includes in every Quran. act of morality, not just. Okay. So, somewhere in the Quran, uh, Allah said. Chapter oh. 24, verse 31, chapter 33, verse 59. Can you read one? Yeah, sure. sure. You can read. I'll give you the reference right now, no problem. I'll just be interested in. So, is this the actual word of Allah or is this. this yes. This has been translated. This is a translation through? of the actual word of Allah. Yes. Okay, okay. In so, the English. Uh, so, is it actually. What I'm trying to get at is is it his word or is it he said it to you and then you wrote it? Allah communicated the Quran, spoke the Quran yeah. to Angel Gabriel. Yeah. Angel Gabriel transcribed, gave the Quran to Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. Prophet Muhammad recited it to his companions. He, was, he could not read or write. Okay. okay. So there's two ways of Quran transmission. First, companions memorized it okay. and they pass it down. Like we have millions of people who memorize the Quran, word for word, letter for letter, like complete Quran, oh, right? Yep. Uh, and then uh, we have what we call a chain of narration. Who you take it from, we know the individuals in the chain, we know they're trustworthy, honest or not. Where did they live, when did they die, when they were born, how did the people in society say about them? Each single person in the chain. It's a whole big science called the science of hadith, science of transmission cool. in, in Islam, right? So that's one way of transmission, which is oral transmission, memorization. Millions of people will start the Quran in every prayer. If you make a mistake, someone will, will correct you because they also memorize, right? So it's impossible for you to change it. If we throw every Written one in the sea, you still bring it in two minutes. Just to bring someone who memorized, they will write it down for you. It's not anywhere around the world, right? Cool. The second way is that we have it written down by the companions. Because every time a verse was revealed, the Prophet used to call a group of people, they were called Katabat al Wahi, writers of revelation. He used to call one of them to write that verse. When was the last verse that was written? The last verse was written was at the end of the life. I'm not sure if you want to say it, it would be the last verse revealed. And do you know when that was, like roughly? There is disagreement among, uh, between the scholars which, which, what is the last verse was revealed, okay. right? But how, what I'm getting at, was it 10 years ago, 100? It was, it was in the last, in the end of the life of the Prophet. It was the end of the life of the Prophet. Oh, so like several hundred years ago. But the last, last chapter was, one of the last chapters was chapter 5. No, 1,400 years, yeah. No, it's so quite a while ago. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And we have carbon dated manuscripts from that time. Okay. Yeah, from the first, okay. second, third century. Right? I'm yeah. just saying in, yeah, in general. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, so we have the carbon dated and we have the oral transmission of the Quran. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, coming back to where we were. Oh, you're going to read me the thing? Yes. Can you read 31? Yeah. 31. Am I allowed to touch it? Of course you're allowed to touch it. I was told I was, you, I think I was told it was, Don't worry about you're told by your labels and friends. Bring yeah. them someday yeah. <laughs> so I can educate them a little uh, bit because they need education. Now, this is when <laughs> I went into school. I think I was told, <laughs> can't touch the floor. And without gloves. Like you can't touch it without gloves, right? Look, look. I'll tell you later what, what they were talking. They're uh, wrong, but 31, 31. Women to reduce some of their vision and guard, not expose their... Adornment. It's still the, the rest of the verses on the other page, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. This is one, there's another one, but the one is enough. No, that's, isn't yeah, that's it? yeah, so because morality comes from the Creator, anyone you would ask would follow that morality, which is the objective that comes from the Creator. It's not coming from us. We know Allah is all wise, all knowing. So if He determined us for us to do something or not to do it, there is always a wisdom behind it. Now, whether we can reach the wisdom or not, that's a separate topic, right? Because we're not gods, we don't know everything. The majority of the things we know, the wisdom behind in Islam. But there would be something you wouldn't know. Like for example, why, why do we not eat pork? Because the Creator commanded we do not eat pork. It's as simple as that, right? You would have Muslims telling you it's dirty animal and this. Don't listen to these people. We didn't study the religion, unfortunately. But the reason we don't do it is because the Creator commanded us not to do it. And if morality were not objective, there is no morality to begin with. So it doesn't matter what you eat or what you don't eat. Someone decided it's wrong for him to eat pork. You shouldn't have an issue with that because morality is subjective anyway. But we say it is objective and there are moral rules in this life. There are things which is objectively wrong for everyone, anyone to do at any time. 
doesn't matter who you are still wrong right now is that okay is it clear is a good answer or no, it's a good answer no. okay no problem i feel like i've learned something no problem we learn we learn from each other you yeah still, you still believe the chance no, we didn't come to that. We're going to come to that. That's what I wanted to I, ask I you. Go, I got to go. Let's <laughs> get to that now. I, got to, get I just to, wanted him to ask, ask his question that, first yeah. before I get to yeah. that, you know? Let's go now because yes. I've got to go soon. No problem. So okay. Me. Now, now leave, let's leave the chance. I'm not going to even go to the chance because okay. the chance, whether you believe it or you don't believe it, you still have to believe that there's a creator. I'll tell you why. The universe exists. Okay. It has a beginning. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Where did the universe come from? I believe it came from the Big Bang. Uh, the Big Bang is a concept that describes how the universe started to exist. Yes. The Big Bang is not a, a, a conscious being which can create or not create something. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking about the Big Bang. I'm saying where did the Big Bang come from? That's the question. Because so the Big I Bang would, is just a description, oh, okay, okay, okay. description of what, what took I, place. How I would describe then what happened then is a bunch of particles got really Where hot. did the particles come from? Where did the particles you come You see, from? you're talking about coincidence. I'm talking about where did oh, okay. it come about from? <laughs> so you'll say about if these particles existed, they must have come from somewhere. Yeah, not, so yeah they must come from something or somewhere, right? Not somebody, something. We say, we say these particles, right, are not conscious. They cannot bring themselves into existence, which is a paradox, right? Because in order for you to create yourself, you have to exist. But to exist, you have to create yourself. That's a paradox. It's impossible for anything to create itself. If I want to create me, I have to be in existence first. That's a very interesting question because my answer would only be that they have always been, but that does not make sense. What do you mean? That doesn't make sense. They always been. Yeah. So that opposes. That, that's what my that's what my brain tells me. It goes. Well, surely the particles they've just always been ever ever since ever. Why? But then that doesn't make sense. Yes. So. It doesn't make interesting. sense. Interesting. I will not be able to answer you now. Okay, Lim, I will now no have problem. To think about no it. problem. Good. So what I say is the following. Yeah, let's even take the idea that the particles were eternal. Let me even take the absurdity of that okay. idea. Let's say that the particles were, were eternal. Mm -hmm. The particles are arranged in a certain manner. Sure. They're restricted. Sure. Okay. You will still have to answer. Why are they arranged in a way and not in another way? Number one. Number two. Why do they exist rather than not existing? Because they're not conscious. They didn't bring themselves into existence. Okay. So why did they exist to begin with, right? Okay. Number three, you would have to answer why they're restricted and not infinite or, or unrestricted. There has to be something that placed a restriction on them. So even if someone were to believe the particles were eternal, they would still require an external explanation from themselves to explain why they are in existence. So what we say as Muslims is very simple. You cannot have something from nothing. Yes, I've heard It's this. impossible, right? Okay, so we say that the universe is in existence. It has a beginning. Everything it has a beginning requires something else to, be, to bring it into existence because it has a beginning, it has a start, okay? And we say that the universe, in order for me to create the universe, in order for me to create this stand, I will need specific type of materials. I need yeah. knowledge of language, plastic, etc. Without these things, I can never create the stand. It's an impossibility. Without knowledge, we cannot even know. Power, we cannot even comprehend. Independence of the universe and uh, uh, not being restricted by the laws within the universe, you cannot create the universe. You have to be not restricted by its laws because you start it. You have to be independent of it to create it. To create it. You have to be powerful in a way we cannot know, intelligent in a way we cannot know, and you'd have to have a will to place the things, which is the answer to why things are arranged in a way rather than another way, okay? So we say either way, people have to adopt this idea. Now, the second thing, which is very brief about the idea of uh, coincidence, the randomness does not exist in the real world. Now think about that for a second. Nothing in this existence is random. If I flip a coin, is it random 50-50? You would say the chance isn't random. It's not randomized. Would you say is it a 50-50 chance? It's a random thing. It's either head or tails. I would say it's a random okay. chance. Okay, if yeah. I were to know how much force I'm putting uh, uh, when I'm throwing the cone, the atmosphere yeah. around me, the air, the pressure, the 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 gravity, would I know would it be head or tails or not? It may have a small influence. But no, I still don't think so. No, but there's actually a French scientist. I'll give you the name right now. Who made a machine where every time it gives you what you want, heads or tails, because it's controlled, uh, and you know exactly everything around surrounding this movement that you will make. So you will be able to know whether it will be heads or tails. So it is not random, it is just our ignorance of the surroundings that around the, 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 this coin toss is what makes us call it a random process. Can you show me one thing which is random in the world? I would, I would say hmm. what my brain went to as soon as you said there's no such thing as random is mm -hmm. uh, if you look at any stream, right, 
all the rocks that are just everywhere. Like if you look at a forest, you have all of these rocks everywhere. Like okay, but these rocks, randomly. but yeah. the rocks are not just everywhere. The rocks, they have a whole lot of a process of why they came to, to the where to where they are. Yeah, but it's not like they're on. And a, it requires causality. Would you? I wouldn't say though that Allah went. Oh, I'm going to put uh, these rocks have a, like a purpose. They have a journey to go on for their. their no, random, but random is different. Random is the, something occurring without external influence. That's the definition of randomness. Yeah. That's a different. That's how. But these rocks have an external influence, and that's what I'm trying to say. So I don't think people understand what random is when they use the word. So sometimes we need to define randomness. Is something that happens without a cause, without a purpose, without anything, it just happens. But there is nothing in this world that happens like this. There is always an explanation, a cause, uh, information that we did not access that makes us say it's random. You look at the stars, they say they're random. Bring an astronaut, he say, oh, actually, no, this, this is arranged in this way. This is this celestial system, this is this. He will tell you this is not random, you just don't know. So randomness is the label that we place because of our ignorance on things we do not fully understand. So, no one can say, oh, the universe is just random, that's the way, that's why the way it is. It still requires an explanation because there is no randomness. There must be a reason why they, they are the way they are because nothing happens randomly. There's no randomness in existence. Thank you so much. No problem, my pleasure. But you have a Quran. I do, I do, I do. That's, you do. that's where I started. I had a little bit of a flick through when uh, your friend gave, gave it to me. No, that's good. Yeah, so but I actually, might... in, try to... Uh... Oh, yeah, but I was wearing gloves because I thought I wasn't allowed to. No, so no, 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 said no, no, no. Look, there are... Very thin let me clarify moment. this point so it doesn't stay too much in your, in your mind. This is not the Quran. This is a translation of the Quran. Okay? This is a okay. translation in the English of the Arabic so actual Quran. the Quran is only the one with the Arabic... Uh, the Quran is only miraculous and has certain rules Okay. Uh, 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 pertain to it only in Arabic. For example, right. me as a Muslim, yeah. uh, if I do not do wudu, which is act an action of ablution, pur purification, yeah. I'm not allowed to touch the, 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 the Arabic one. I have to do ablution first in order for me to be able to hold it, as, even as a Muslim. Okay. Yeah? So, uh, uh, if someone is a non-Muslim, he does not do ablution, he does not know how to do ablution, he does not do what we call also ghusl, which is a, another type of purification. That's why they're not allowed to hold the Arabic one because they cannot even perform these things in order for them to hold it. And that rule applies for Muslims and non-Muslims. If someone does not have ablution, is not allowed to hold it. Whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, you're Japanese or Hindu, it doesn't matter. You need to come with that rule in order for you to hold it. But that only applies to the Arabic. And because these friends of yours, they didn't study, they don't know, they don't understand that the translation is completely different than the Arabic, and that the same rule does not apply there. That's why my advice, if you have any questions, come back. Rather than to go to, uh, to, the, to lay <laughs> Muslims who didn't study, so, they, so, so you get actual answers, you know? Cheers, my friend. No you problem. Have a nice day. You too. Cheers, buddy. You Keep become Muslim boys. next time I see you, yeah? <laughs> see you. <Yeah. laughs>